Welcome everyone. want to take the time to explain exactly what is and what isn't a sat pack. The reason for the offerings of the sat pack initially and what's included and not included in the sat pack. Initially, when the sat packs were offered, sat pack stands for SATCOM Acquisition Trust Package. The SAT pack was created to give individuals something most people did not have access to, and that is a security. A security in one's name, whereby the security had value and could be traded on the market. Because we had never done a trade on the market of a security, it was a work in progress or process. What we knew as an organization is that it would be not only possible, but that we would have to follow certain regulations and codes. It was our desire as an organization to follow those regulations and codes to the letter, or that could affect the value of the package being offered. So the initial step was to create something that had value, not just a package and call it a package because many organizations have done that. They've just created something out of thin air and then said, look, there it is. We couldn't do that at SATCOM. We had to actually attach value to the package. So that's been the goal from the beginning was to make sure that each sat pack had value. So we had to supply something to the client in order to support the value of their pack and the time that it would take to develop the package. So we added certain things to the package so that it would not be just sitting there so that it could accumulate interest over time. We wanted to show the client the sat pack member our appreciation for them taking the opportunity to acquire one of our sat packs so we added things to the sat pack and continued to do it periodically initially they received what was referred to as a 98 series number 98 series numbers are numbers that are supplied to foreign corporations well, each sat pack, because we are based out of Nevis Kitts Islands in the Caribbean, is a foreign package. So we acquire a 98 series number for each sat pack member. That is a corporation. And we set it up as a trust so that an individual, if they were to do the research, would find out that they can now utilize that trust as their corporation for which to operate through. And if they filled out the proper forms with the Internal Revenue Service, such as the 8832, which notifies them that you are a private entity and you are non-profit. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to places like Walmart, when you go to places like, what is the other facility, Lowe's or Home Depot, you can give them that 98 series number, register with their organization for being tax exempt so that when you are acquiring or making purchases, an individual, if they are tax exempt and have filed the proper paperwork, would not have to pay taxes on their purchases. That's what a 98 series number or any other corporate EIN number can do for a person. 
that's what that was being provided for. We cannot give you all of the details on that. You will have to, if you are a SAPAC member, do your research on that information. It is readily available on the site for the Internal Revenue Services and at each one of the retailers who recognize and accept tax-exempt numbers. People say, well, I need the form that comes from the Internal Revenue Service regarding my organization. Ladies and gentlemen, that is simple. You have to contact the office. It is the Philadelphia Office for Foreign Corporations with the Internal Revenue Service. You can get the number online or by simply dialing the IRS tax information number. I believe it ends in 1040 and tell them you need to speak with that office. You just simply give them the name of your trust. You tell them you've never received the form from the IRS when you establish the trust. They will ask you for some information. What we can tell you is you will simply just tell them you need to get a copy of the document because you're establishing the bank account for banking purposes because that's why they gave you the number in the first instance. There is an address that if they ask for you'll tell them that it never was received and you want to have it sent to the local address. They'll ask you what is that information but you'll tell them you will need it to be faxed to you. In order to get a copy sooner, they will fax it to you. They won't email it to you, so don't have that conversation with them because that's not their system. You have to follow their procedures, not ours. So provide them a fax number and or an address so that they can send you the form because some locations are going to want to see the form from the IRS. We do not have that form. Our job was just to supply the number for you. It wasn't to complete the process for you. Yes, I know to some people that's disturbing because they wanted the entire process done. Ladies and gentlemen, for the amount that was paid in order for us to do that, we would have to increase the cost. Now, mind you, if you would like for SACOM to do that for you, there will be an added charge for that. You can inquire with the BC department on that issue. After providing individuals with the 98 series number, we then gave them, at initially, not at this time, it is no longer being offered. It has not been offered since March of 2018, but we were providing them a CPN number. That CPN number is like a corporation's social security number. The trust was receiving a CPN number whereby that corporation could then utilize that number after establishing its identity. What do we mean by establishing its identity? Well, the number is new. It has no history. So there needs to be a history created. So what we did is we asked everyone to provide us with an address. The history cannot have the same address as the trust owner. It needs to be a separate address in either a different city or a different state. Once we receive that information, we've supplied the individuals with their CPN number. The individuals could, if it is their choice, register that number, receive credit cards, and operate through that number through the business entity. It is not a separate identification for you. It is a identity inf information and identification number for the trust, the corporation. It is 100% legal when it is done correctly. We cannot tell you how to do it correctly. There are organizations out there that will charge you to do it correctly for you. They will charge you $3,000, $4,000. We were providing that to individuals at no additional charge. However, because 
there was so, so many individuals who were so confused and wanted that information provided to them, we've discontinued that service. We've discontinued offering that at no additional charge. Many people were misunderstanding what we meant at no additional charge. Well, the reason why we offered it at no additional charge because we were just providing it for you. We were not providing services for that. We were just providing the access to that number in the trust name at no additional charge. So that means that we were not accepting responsibility for providing you the details as to how to operate that. We were not warranting that number. We did what was called a soft registration. The individuals who knew or who did their research or who would take the time to understand what those numbers are for would then already have a foundation laid which we helped to provide a soft registration of the number for the individuals. We take no responsibility. We are not ever going to be held liable if you take and do something with one of the items we provide. It is the same as with an automobile. Once you drive it off the lot, if you take a car and you go and you rob a bank, the car dealership who sold the car to you in the first place or the manufacturer of the car is not responsible for what you have done with their product. So that is why each one of you are encouraged to follow the laws as they apply to you and your organization. We cannot tell you which laws apply to you. We cannot tell you which laws apply to your organization. We can only tell you that you must follow the rules, the law, the regulations that are mandated. That is why the cost is as low as it is because we're providing a service for you where if you were to go someplace else you would play excuse me you would pay three four five times more just for that one service we're providing several things at once to you that you would get from so many other different places but it would be time consuming and it would be overly encumbersome well, after providing people at that time, we're no longer providing this anymore, the CPN number, we were doing what was known as the IRS filings for having you noted as a non-taxpayer. We provided these documents to individuals and told them the only thing you have to do is fill in these areas. The reason why we had individuals filling out portions of forms and filling out information is because we wanted the individual to gain experience we wanted them to have a we wanted them to have a sense of I help do this we wanted them to participate in the process many people found that very 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 difficult to do because they didn't want to invest the time in participating in the product they wanted someone to provide them the service where everything was done ladies and gentlemen the reason why SATCOM offered its services for as low as they did is because of the amount of work that it would normally take to put the process together they were trying to save individuals monies and at the same time educate them so that these individuals could accomplish a lot more in the future what took place is that individuals wanted to save money so they started giving the forms to their friends and tried to duplicate the process the problem is SACOM wasn't giving all of the pieces of the puzzle they were only giving certain pieces so when these individuals were sending in the forms they were sending it into the wrong departments they were sending the wrong forms to the wrong departments and these departments were now flagging all documents because they were following our format they flagged every single document we sent other individuals have sent it separately 
and changing the format a little bit and their documents have been filed but the one sent by our company has been blocked and this is as a result of individuals deciding that they are going to take the process and duplicate it so we are no longer doing the Internal Revenue Service forms. The non-taxpayer registration, we are not any longer doing that process. The registering of the corporation as nonprofit, the trust organization, we're no longer completing that process. Sorry, individuals have interfered and it's uh, become a little too time consuming. We do apologize to everyone, which is why we never guaranteed that service. We only offered it as a courtesy to all the members. Now we have the other piece of that puzzle for the SAT pack. We were including it into our foreign trust. Ladies and gentlemen, each SAT pack member is a point zero 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 one percent member of the SATCOM organization. We've incorporated each one so that when we take our accumulation of assets and we've been accumulating assets over the last couple of years, we will be giving a percentage to each member. How do we give that percentage? In what's known as a tax write-off. This is how we help to support and back each SAT pack. The SAT pack 1s, the SAT pack 1x, their SAT packs will be backed by 1.5 million dollars which is divided according to the terms on the website amongst that group. The SAT pack 2x and the SAT pack plus and the SAT pack prime they are put one moment everyone I apologize the purpose of putting SAT pack members into the trust was for their protection eventually individuals will be protected by their association with the foreign trust and being incorporated into the foreign trust agreement. The individuals who are part of the QPAC will also have that privilege of being a part of the trust organization because each one of their QPACs is in and of itself a trust and each one of the QPACs are incorporated into the trust agreement for the International Foundation. This is what we're doing. This was the intent of the SAT PAC, the original SAT PAC. Now that includes the original SAT PAC members, the SAT PAC 1ers, which is what we refer to that group as, and the SAT PAC 1X. However, in another video we'll explain the purpose of the SAT PAC 1X. In a separate video, we'll explain the purpose of the SAT PAC 2X, and in a separate video from those, the SAT PAC Prime, SAT PAC Plus, and the Q PAC. Each one will take out 20 minutes to explain what each SAT PAC consists of, the basics, and what their design is for. The SAT PAC 1 was never designed to eradicate one from a system. Now we did put out information on exiting the system but not with the SAT PAC. Did the SAT PAC accomplish that? Of course it did. It provided an affidavit with the birth certificate attached where the county recorder was supposed to recognize the individual as having attained the age of majority upon their filing. Again we can't make the county recorder do that but we can have you document such and now we can have it ruled by a judge that such has been the accomplishment we will update you on that information in the future we want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this brief explanation as to what the SATPAC 1 is its original intent and purpose
Thank you for your interest in our organization, and we ask that you have a pleasant day. Goodbye.